As the global aviation industry strives to recover and grow, safety issues remain at the center of attention, especially when they involve modern, widely used aircraft. Recently, the Federal Aviation Administration issued two significant safety directives. What came as a shock, however, is that these directives directly target the Boeing 787 Dreamliner fleet. So what exactly is going wrong with the Boeing 787? Just how serious is this issue? Let's dive in. The safety of airline passengers in moments of crisis, especially during sudden cabin depressurization, depends entirely on the flawless performance of emergency oxygen systems. That is why a recent discovery on the Boeing 787 Dreamliner instantly caught the attention of the Federal Aviation Administration. Investigators uncovered a troubling flaw. Oxygen supply tubes in certain passenger masks were found kinked, a design or installation error that could choke off the very airflow meant to save lives. Though the problem was identified only in masks at some middle row seats, the mere possibility of passengers being denied oxygen in an emergency was deemed intolerable. For the FAA, inaction was not an option. To confront this risk, the agency moved forward with a Binding Airworthiness Directive, AD, mandating full inspections across 119 Boeing 787 aircraft in U.S. airline fleets, including those operated by American Airlines AA. Far from being a knee-jerk reaction, the directive came after a painstaking consultation process in which regulators worked closely with Boeing and affected carriers analyzing technical data and gathering expert input before issuing their final order. But consensus did not come easily. A sharp debate flared between the FAA and American Airlines over the timeline for compliance. While the FAA initially pushed for a strict 24-month deadline, AA countered with a request for 48 months, arguing that a longer window would allow the inspections to be folded into routine maintenance cycles, sparing the airline costly and disruptive unscheduled downtime. Finally, the agency rejected the 48-month proposal outright but did soften its stance, extending the compliance deadline to 36 months. This compromise both safeguards safety and allows airlines to manage costs and schedules more effectively. On the technical front, engineers initially worried about the complexity of the fix. Straightening kinked oxygen tubes inside mask housings seemed both impractical and unreliable. In response, the FAA approved a more decisive and elegant remedy. Instead of tinkering with individual tubes, airlines would remove and replace entire oxygen mask panels wherever the defect was found. This approach not only streamlined the repair process, but also guaranteed long-term reliability and quality control. Perhaps the most surprising aspect of the directive, however, was its modest price tag. With estimated costs of $252,875 across all 119 affected Dreamliners, the measure ranks among the least expensive airworthiness directives in recent memory. However, this time the issue is not about cost, but about aviation safety. In this industry, even the smallest flaw, if left unchecked, can carry catastrophic consequences. By acting swiftly and decisively, regulators ensured that a potentially life-threatening weakness could be eliminated without imposing a crippling financial burden on the industry. Wait. Don't forget to hit subscribe, because we know you're going to love what's coming next. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. While the directive concerning oxygen masks was largely preventative, the second directive, focused on the pilot seat switch, was issued in direct response to a terrifying safety incident. On August 20, 24, a Latam Airlines Boeing 787 operating a flight from Sydney to Auckland abruptly pitched nose down, violently hurling passengers and crew. More than 50 people were left injured in a matter of seconds. The investigation uncovered a cause that was as unexpected as it was alarming. A critical switch controlling the captain's seat movement located on the rear side of the seat was found to be defective. Its protective cover had failed. While a flight attendant was working in the cockpit, they inadvertently leaned against the exposed switch, triggering the captain's seat to shift forward. In a split second, the captain was forced against the control panel and the aircraft nearly plunged headlong toward the ground. This was not an isolated freak accident. Investigators soon linked the event to a broader pattern of similar uncommanded pilot seat movements reported across the 787 fleet. What initially looked like a rare mishap was instead evidence of a systemic safety vulnerability, one capable of endangering lives on any given flight. Given the severity and urgency, the FAA bypassed its usual rulemaking process and issued an emergency airworthiness directive. The emergency status meant there would be no lengthy public comment period, no delays, only immediate action. 
The directive required every Boeing 787 operating in U.S. fleets to undergo urgent inspection of its seat switches. Any switch showing signs of damage or wear had to be replaced without delay. This swift and uncompromising move underscored the FAA's resolve. No convenience, no operational cost, and no bureaucratic process could outweigh the protection of human life. By acting decisively, regulators not only neutralized the risk of recurrence but also reinforced cockpit safety at its most fundamental level, restoring a measure of trust in an aviation system shaken by the incident. Adding to the FAA's recent safety directives, one critical dimension cannot be overlooked – the role and responsibility of the manufacturer itself. Meanwhile, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, once hailed as a symbol of innovation and a milestone in commercial aviation technology, now faces pressing questions about its quality control processes and overall reliability. When it first entered service, the Dreamliner was celebrated as nothing short of a revolution. Designed around passenger comfort, it introduced features that set new benchmarks for long-haul flying. Its advanced pressurization system keeps the cabin altitude at about 6,000 feet, well below the traditional standard, reducing fatigue and headaches. Higher cabin humidity helps ease dry skin and eye irritation, while windows nearly 30% larger than those on older aircraft feature electronic dimming instead of mechanical shades. Coupled with its aerodynamic design and quieter engines, the Dreamliner offers a cabin environment that is calmer, quieter, and more restorative. Notably, the most defining innovation was structural. It became the world's first commercial airliner, built primarily from carbon fiber composites rather than aluminum, a lighter, stronger, and more fuel-efficient material. This leap in design was expected to redefine the future of air travel. Yet more than a decade later, that image has been overshadowed by a troubling string of technical issues. What is most concerning is that these failures are not isolated events. They emerge across multiple components of the aircraft, from seemingly minor flaws like kinked oxygen supply tubes, to critical systems such as the captain's seat switch. This pattern points to a deeper and more systemic issue within Boeing's quality management framework. The oxygen mask anomaly, which at first glance might appear trivial, is in fact a stark reminder that even the most basic safety elements can be overlooked or inadequately vetted during design and production. But this isn't the first time Boeing 787 is in trouble. On March 2025, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration dropped a bombshell on Boeing, a new airworthiness directive ordering airlines to inspect the forward pressure bulkhead of the 787 Dreamliner, a structure so critical that it literally keeps the cabin pressurized at 35,000 feet. The reason? Investigators believe Boeing may have committed a series of assembly blunders, gaps left unsealed, fasteners incorrectly installed, and key specifications simply ignored. These flaws might not bring down a plane tomorrow, but the FAA's warning was stark. Over time, they could snowball into fatigue cracks, corrosion, or even catastrophic failure. And disturbingly, this is not an isolated case. It's just the latest entry in a growing dossier of problems haunting the Dreamliner. Since 2020, Boeing has repeatedly been forced to halt 787 deliveries due to manufacturing defects, particularly errors in the fuselage join. The company was even compelled to set up so-called shadow factories, off-the-books repair facilities, where more than 120 stranded jets had to be painstakingly reworked before airlines could fly them. The saga echoes an earlier scandal. In 2013, the entire global 787 fleet was grounded after lithium-ion batteries burst. Once marketed as Boeing's crown jewel, the Dreamliner has increasingly become a symbol of a quality control system in freefall. And the troubles don't stop there. In a little-noticed FAA filing earlier this year, regulators flagged yet another potentially disastrous flaw, this time in the Dreamliner's communication systems. A software bug in its VHF radios can cause them to switch between active and standby frequencies without any crew input. In its chilling assessment, the agency warned that Unauthorized frequency changes could lead to loss of communication between the flight crew and air traffic control, a scenario that could end in disaster if it occurred during a critical flight phase. Public reaction has been serious. One commenter on the FAA's website captured the mood bluntly. Given Boeing's history of prioritizing profits over passenger safety, I wouldn't fly on one of their planes if you paid me. Qatar Airways, one of Boeing's major customers, went further admitting that even after installing the FAA-mandated software patch, radio malfunctions persisted across its Dreamliner fleet. Now, with the bulkhead defects, the pressure on Boeing has escalated once more. 
The FAA has ordered inspections across all U.S. registered Dreamliner variants from the Dash 8 to the Dash 10, citing the risk of structural fatigue if the flaws are left unaddressed. The mandate is expected to cost airlines around $850 per aircraft, or $115,000 in total, excluding the far greater financial impact of potential service disruptions. Boeing, for its part, insists the jets remain safe, boasting over 165,000 flight cycles without structural fatigue. But the recurrence of such issues has raised an unnerving question. Are these constant minor flaws masking a much deeper breakdown in Boeing's manufacturing culture? That question has roots stretching back decades. In the 1990s, Boeing overhauled its corporate structure, elevating Wall Street trained executives over veteran engineers. Ever since, critics argue, the company's DNA has shifted, from one centered on engineering excellence to one obsessed with quarterly profits. The results have been plain to see. What was once the pride of American industrial might now finds itself dragged before Congress year after year, forced to explain why yet another safety crisis has erupted from its factories. Against the backdrop of the U.S. maker's ongoing struggle to restore its reputation after the twin tragedies of the 737 MAX program, the Dreamliner's repeated entanglement in safety directives further undermines public trust and shakes the confidence of global airlines. These incidents are not mere technical hiccups. They are warning signs of systemic weaknesses in the oversight and quality assurance mechanisms of one of the world's foremost aircraft manufacturers. So, are these problems the byproduct of an aggressive push to cut costs and accelerate production schedules? Is the company's internal oversight robust enough to detect and eliminate such flaws before they escalate into safety hazards? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below, and don't forget to stay tuned for our next videos by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.